Pokemon is such a bad competitive game, is what I would say if modern tournaments didn't have open team shoots to allow for people to adapt and plan ahead to play as optimally as possible, or if I was just being honest. What? Point is, Pokemon has a lot of mechanics which can throw a wrench into even the best players' game plans, but for the most part we see the best players consistently top pinning events and winning championships because it is possible to play well enough that RNG can be mostly circumvented. And since 2023, the Pokemon company has decided to implement open team sheets in official tournaments, meaning you can see your opponent's moves, items, abilities, and Terra types. Basically, everything short of EV spreads are visible, so you still have to scout out speed tiers and see how much damage your moves are going to do. This rule change has led to the game being far more accessible and easy to learn, while pushing the skill ceiling higher than ever. In 2023, we had players like Sempra and Justin Tang win their very first regional championships the very year they started playing. So while open team sheets still have their naysayers, just about every serious competitive player thinks that they've greatly improved the quality of the game. This tournament doesn't have them. The Global Challenge is a tournament which comes around multiple times a season. It's a great opportunity for players to earn a significant amount of points towards qualifying for the World Championships from the comfort of their own home, or the hotel at the Regional Championship because Pokemon loves making these things the same weekend as major events for some reason. I'm not kidding, I've seen multiple people get their matches done at bars. The World Championships are in August. This Global Challenge is the final one of the year. Currently, I have 371 points out of the 500 I need to qualify for the World Championships. And while I typically hate playing in these online tournaments due to their lack of open team sheets, I think I can abuse this to try to squeeze out a few extra points towards my invite. You see, because the Global Challenge has no open team sheets and is a ladder-based best-of-one event, players will decide to run the most abhorrent, underhanded strategies they can think of to try to catch other players off guard and cheese out as many wins as they can for my game. In prison? What are you imprisoning? The average global challenge match is more comparable to two monkeys having a water balloon fight, but every few balloons is filled with hot sauce. You have fun at first, but it takes just one wrong balloon to make you want to pack up and go home. I fully intend on being the monkey with the most hot sauce balloons this time around, because while I would like to do well, I'd much rather just do okay and get a few points and ruin a few people's days for the sake of a video. But before we get into my journey, be sure to leave a like in this video and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this for you to check out right after this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. Okay, let's get into it. You saw the thumbnail, we're gonna be using the worm, but we must ask the second most important philosophical worm question. What does Orthworm actually do? Well, you see, Orthworm is actually a really interesting Pokemon Pokemon. With 75 HP, 140 defense, and a pure steel typing, it's obviously a defensive powerhouse. But its true niche is its combination of its signature move along with its ability. Shed Tail is a move which sacrifices half the user's HP to create a substitute and passes it to a partner Pokemon allowing them not only a free switch in, but guarding them from any damage and status moves. This allows for the Pokemon behind the substitute to attack with impunity, or use setup moves to sweep later. Its ability combines well with this, as Earth Eater not only grants Orthworm immunity to ground moves, which leaves it only its fire and fighting weaknesses, but it also grants it 25% healing every time it's hit by ground moves. This allows for players to spam Earthquake next to Orthworm while healing it and passing tons of substitutes to partner Pokemon. And that's exactly what I intend to do here. Also, as a side note, Orthworm is like one of three Pokemon that actually hard walls Landorus Incarnate, which is one of the most broken Pokemon in BGC right now. So that's another bonus. Orthrum's first partner will be a choice banded Landorus Therian with the Water Terra type. This Pokemon not only has Intimidate to reduce damage from opposing Pokemon, but it has a massive 145 base attack stat, further increased by choice band to turn its earthquakes into a nuke. But it's unfortunately a bit slow in the current metagame, so because of this, I opted to run it next to a Fluttermane. Fluttermane's ability Protosynthesis allows for it to get a speed boost by holding the booster energy item. By combining this with Icy Wind, I can use Fluttermane to lower the speed of opposing Pokemon, letting Landorus outspeed them and score massive damage. However, Earthquake is 
is just as capable of dealing massive damage to my own Flutter main. So this is where our first hidden tech comes in. We'll be running the Flying Terra type instead of the Fairy Terra type, which is much more common on Flutter main, allowing for us to use Earthquake next to Flutter main without any fear of KOing it. As for Flutter main's other moves, I realized I didn't have a Trick Room matchup, so I just gave it Moonblast, Trick Room, and Imprison, allowing for Flutter main to prevent any opposing Pokemon from setting up Trick Room against me until it leaves the field or gets KO'd. The next Pokemon on the team is a multi-skill Terra Normal Dragon Dance Dragonite. Inner Focus is typically the optimal ability on this Pokemon due to it blocking Intimidate and Fake Out flinches, but since I'm passing substitutes and setting up Dragon Dances with this thing, I figured this ability would get me much more mileage. Also, most people will just assume Dragonite is Inner Focus, so they'll almost never be brave enough to try to go for a Fake Out against it. If I can pass a substitute into this Dragonite and set up the plus two, it should outspeed everything and be able to click Terra Normal Extreme Speed and Earthquake for massive damage. Along with that, I decided to run Ice Spinner. This is because Grassy Terrain is super common in the current metagame due to Rillaboom being so strong. This move will not only be able to deal massive damage to Rillaboom as it's super effective against it, but it will also clear terrain on the field, allowing for Earthquake to hit for full damage rather than the reduced damage it would have due to the terrain. Of course, wherever there's a Dragonite, there's a Chen Pao, since Sword of Ruin will lower everything's defense and allow for me to score more damage. My Chen Pao is a standard Focus Sash set with Ice Spinner, only this one is Terra Flying to allow for Landers to Earthquake next to it. Also, Ogre Pond is here. Everyone say hi, Ogre Pond. With this underheaded best of one cheese team, I set off to try to farm some wins on stream. And my laptop started bugging out, so I lost to Conkledur off screen. But this wasn't on camera, so let's just not count it. We'll move on to Maria, who's running a pretty strange team with not only a Polyrath, but an Ursa Ring. Someone didn't buy Legends Arceus. Since we're still on low ladder, this is a great opportunity to show off how the team works mechanically. I lead off with Landorus and Chen Pao, immediately terrifying my Chen Pao and click the world's strongest Earthquake with Sword of Ruin active to decrease my opponent's defenses. And it did a lot. Choice ban Landorus, thank you. Thank you, my goat. For our second match, we face off against a more standard team of Incineroar, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Fluttermane, Raging Bolt, and Torkoal. This player really made me fight for my win because with Rillaboom's grassy terrain, my earthquake damage is significantly reduced. I decide to lead off with Landorus and Fluttermane regardless as I can still remove Rillaboom from the game early with Choice Banded U-Turn. Unfortunately, my opponent does immediately go for Fake Out into my Landorus and a Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam putting it in range of a following priority Grassy Glide for the next turn. I did, however, manage to get my Icy Wind off, meaning that both of the opponent's Pokemon are now slowed down. I can't afford to lose my Landorus this early, so I swap in my Orthworm to resist both Grassy Glide and Dazzling Gleam and hopefully survive. But my opponent surprisingly decided to attack my Fluttermane slot with the Rillaboom, meaning I actually could have U-turned out here. Oh well. My Fluttermane goes down, but Terra Normal Multiscale Dragonite hits the field and is able to get a Dragon Dance off to threaten the one-shot on Fluttermane with extreme speed. This threat gives my Orthworm the opening it needs to be able to go for Shed Tail and get my Lander Therian in. And while Rillaboom does hit the field again and has an opportunity to fake out my Dragonite, they do assume that I'm inner focus and I get to click Extreme Speed and Stomping Tantrum to take two KOs this turn. From there, I clean up with my Landorus behind Substitute. Game 3, I face off against Johnny, who's running a fairly standard manual rain team. Luckily, this one doesn't have Rillaboom, meaning I can Earthquake as much as I want. My opponent leads off with Incineroar and Tornadus, as I lead off with Fluttermane and Landorus. So I simply lock in Icy Wind and Rock Slide, dealing major damage and scoring a KO on the Tornadus after two turns, while chunking Incineroar for a lot of health. Ogrepan hits the field, so I, so I swap in Orthworm for Landorus and click Icy Wind, allowing for me to click Choice Ban U-Turn into the Ogrepan a turn later, pinning my opponent with Earthquake Dragonite next to Orthworm and securing me another win. We're kind of on a roll here, and you all probably understand exactly how the team works by now, so let's cut to a montage of some of the ups and downs of the run. Editor, your finest punch-out soundtrack, please. Hopefully this KOs. Nice, we're good, that's a win. Die. I can heavy slam the right slot. Oh, they go annihilate. It's the one I didn't want. Oh. Hey, remember how I said this is a closed team sheet tournament, so people really love to bring out the cheese? Well, I wasn't kidding. After going for a bit of a losing streak, 
I ended up facing off against this Iron Valiant team, and I really didn't want to lose another match today. It seemed like it was just a standard rain team, just with the Iron Valiant kind of tacked on. And while Iron Valiant isn't the best Pokemon in doubles, it's not that bad, as it has a lot of options in Moonblast, Close Combat, and even Hypnosis if you want to get crazy. Since we're playing in the Global Challenge, I just kind of assumed it would be a Hypnosis set, as that's what would catch most people off guard. Oh, how wrong I was. As I lead off Landorus and Fluttermane into Urshifu and Tornadus, I immediately have to pop my Water Terra to avoid losing Landorus turn 1 to Surging Strikes. I swap in Ogre Pond and take the Surging Strikes in case they target Fluttermane, and miss my Rock Slide on Tornadus. Luckily, I'm just built different and crit my Ivy Cudgel into the Torrent, so they lose it next turn anyways. Iron Valiant then hits the field, and I have a sudden realization of what set they're running. They click Terra Psychic Expanding Force, nuking my side of the field and redirecting my Ivy Cudgel into Ndidi, protecting the Iron Valiant, which can now sweep my team. Luckily, I managed to get off an Icy Wind, slowing down the Iron Valiant and Urshifu, which allows for my Orthworm and Landorus to clean up the rest of the game, narrowly avoiding another loss there. I felt really good about managing to play my way out of such a strange matchup, and then I lost to Primary and Eladios. Terra Blast? Yo, this Fluttermane's dead. Pfft, okay. I mean, we should eat that. Just barely, though. Yikes. I did not expect them to be Flare Blitz. It's just wrong, man. Mr. Millipede was like a damn brother to me. Throat Chop, that's not a move I thought you'd have. Please live. I hate the GC. <laughs> I hate the GC, man. Uh, <laughs> why are you running Throat Chop? <laughs> I did, however, redeem myself by beating down an Archaldon team with Orthworm, though. As day one wrapped up, I realized how to fix my little streaming issue and was able to go live the next day. I started off day two with a pretty meh rating of 1544. My only goal for this event was to get points and farm some clips for the video, so I just wanted to get enough wins to finish with a rating of at least 1600. And we started off day two once again on kind of a roll. I even managed to dodge my worst matchup in Don Dozo, because my opponent's internet just kind of sucked. Let's go! <laughs> Please tell me that was them. After this huge win streak, we hit a rating of 1616, meaning I could comfortably stop right here. But I decided to push for just one last win. I mean, the 10 points of hitting 1600s is nice. But I'm going for my world's invite, so 20 would be a pretty decent bump. This was a mistake, as my very next game we face off against Jimmy at a rating of 1528, and managed to lose off of extreme speed not quite picking up the KO against Raging Bolt, tanking my rating down to 1597. Like I said, my goal was only 1600s, and I've played this game long enough to know what's about to happen to me. If I try to push much further past my goal, I'm gonna lose a game, tilt, and then end up with a score way lower than I wanted it to be. I say, whatever, let's just get back up to 1600 and stop so I can secure the points and be done with it. Here's where karma struck, as my very next opponent was once again a Don Dozo player. But this dude paid for fiber internet, so I just kinda had to take the L. No disconnect for me. Knocking me even further down to 1581. There's no way I lose this next one though. Oh, I hate it here, bro. I hate it here. The GC is actually like the worst tournament ever. At this point, I realized that if I don't want to embarrass myself in front of Orthworm, I kind of needed to lock in. 
and I do just that, managing to take wins versus my next few opponents and crawling my way back up to 1598. Okay, easy. Just one more win and I'm at my goal. No! <laughs> Why? Why must you do this to me? Why must you give me the freaking Don Dozo matchup as soon as I'm like, oh, I just need one more win? Luckily, Pikachu threw me a softball and gave me a hard trick room matchup. Finally, I can use that Imprison tech to get a free win, and immediately after that, I faced off against a Hail team. Arguably a worse matchup than Dondozo, since I have two times 4 weaknesses to it, and two of my Terras are Terra flying. I decided to throw Kosh into the Icy Wind though, and just bring Landorus anyways, hoping to skill diff the matchup. I lead off Fluttermane and Landorus once again against Dragapult and Farigarath. Since Dragapult has access to U-Turn and there's an Ursaluna in the back, I just assume my opponent will just want to try to set up Trick Room on me turn 1 to try to get Ursaluna in and sweep my team. I Terra Flying and imprison the Trick Room while Landorus goes for an Earthquake to deal massive damage. I get the call right and KO for Rigoraf and Dragapult before Trick Room ever goes off. And who else is in the back but Ursaluna and Iron Bundle? Two Pokemon that happen to get walled out by Orthworm. I take my KOs, take my points, and finish at a rating of 1612. And despite my chat being demons and trying to get me to play more games, I know what's best for my mental health and just stop right there. This rating landed me at 487th out of 3,320 people and netted me 10 points, leaving me at 381 out of the 500 I need for my world's invite. While this team may have not been one of the more serious ones I've ever built, I still had a lot of fun trying to farm some wins with it within this event. Orthworm is actually one of the coolest Pokemon added to Gen 9 and I was really glad I could finally use it to earn some points. Here's the code for the team, by the way. I know, a lot of, I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna ask for that. But what do you think about this team and what did you run in the Global Challenge? Do you enjoy open team sheets or do you prefer closed team sheets? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you wanna support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of the videos like all these people right here. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Kanor, Narwiz, Jordan Harridge, and Halo for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.